Hi, welcome to a statistics video. This one has a look at how we collect different types of data and how that data can be presented. Just a few general ideas here. Uh, the types of data that we can have, got a lot of different names to learn here. Categorical data, not all data is numerical or number based, it uh, can be in categories or names of things. So it can be categories, names or types of things and the actual data ends up not being numbers at all but names. So there's two types of categorical data. There's nominal data and there's almost the word name in there. But anyway, nominal data uh, can't be put in order. There's no sort of inherent or basic order to the uh, pieces of data that you get. Um, an example of that is your favourite breakfast cereal. If you think of your favourite breakfast cereal and maybe the different favourite breakfast cereal of your friend, um, your favourite breakfast cereal might be more important to you, but it, it doesn't necessarily come before your friend's favourite breakfast cereal, so there's not a, a built-in order to uh, nominal data. And the data we would collect there is, uh, I guess, how many people have that as their favourite, but the actual data itself are the names of the cereals. And ordinal data is another type of categorical data. It's kind of got a, a bit of an order. It can be put in order. And a good example of that is your coffee sizes. You might order a small coffee, a regular coffee, or a large coffee. Now, most people would put that in that order, small, regular, and then large, even though they are names of things. So um, that's uh, categorical data. The data itself would be a whole bunch of small, regular, or large items, but um, not numerical as such but there is an order to it, a built-in order. So that's the two types of categorical data, nominal data and ordinal data. We've got then the normal uh, quantitative data. Now you can see uh, the word quantity or amount, I guess, quantity almost built into that name as well. Um, so that helps us uh, imagine that there's uh, numbers or quantities uh, built into this sort of data. Now there's two types of quantitative data we need to consider as well. There's discrete data. Now that's data that can be counted in whole chunks. I'll explain that in a minute, but a good example that gets us uh, to understand here, the number of children in your family, you're not going to answer 5.2 or 6.1 for the number of children in your family, you're going to say, well, okay, there's three children in my family or two children. They're kind of whole numbers. Um, now, why I've put in the definition there that it can be counted in whole chunks, every now and again you get uh, maybe a flour or um, maybe some cooking ingredient, uh, and that could be um, sold in half a kilo package and a one kilo package and a 1.5 kilo package and so they're not whole numbers as such. Uh, each of those is like half a kilo uh, more than the other. But that would still be an example of discrete data because we don't get all the numbers in between. You can either buy a half a kilo, one kilo, or a 1.5 kilo. Uh, and so they're, they're still chunks, even though they're uh, not whole number chunks. They're still discrete data. And the other type of data we've got that is quantitative is continuous data. Now that's uh, data that can be measured and it's measured on a continuous scale. If you consider when we measure anything, if you measure your height or your weight or whatever, before you round off uh, to the nearest centimetre or the nearest kilogram or whatever, you um, have data that if you had a good enough measuring uh, piece of equipment, you could have that to say 10 decimal places or even more. So when you measure something, we're just rounding that off really for convenience. So when you measure the height of students in the class, you get continuous data. And that's uh, data that's based on a measurement. Any measured data uh, would be cons considered to be continuous before you round it off. They're the types of data there, categorical data and quantitative data. So knowing your way around those uh, th those pieces of terminology would be helpful there. You really need to uh, memorize those different types because quite a few questions are based on you knowing the difference between those different data types. Okay, when we get to present the data, I'm just going to go through your basic uh, presentation formats for the data. And these are your basic graphs that you've seen, many of you've seen before. There's a bar graph, a horizontal bar graph here. You can have this divided bar graph. Uh, it's a bit, bit of a different one here. But you can certainly see that um, the uh, green 
people who've said green is their favorite color is less than the people who said white or orange there and a bit less than the people who said red so at least you can still tell there you can't tell exactly without sort of measuring each uh, each uh, bar or section of the bar and seeing how it compares to the total but uh, it's a quick visual about the different amounts of data there in the different sections. There's a sector or otherwise known as a pie graph and once again it's good for uh, having a quick look and seeing that uh, maybe the uh, dark blue sec darker blue section there is uh, quite a bit less than the, the red or orange section there so it's good for a quick uh, look at uh, how one piece of data compares to another. These are dot plots and um, this indicates uh, you know, your eye is drawn straight to the fact that 5 is the most popular score there, the highest column, and some scores don't have any items there. So a lot of these uh, presentation formats are good for a quick uh, impression of what the data is about and how it uh, compares with each other. This one's a column graph. Now you notice there's gaps in between the bars here, so that's a, just called a column graph. There's a special type of column graph where there's no gaps between the bars and it's got other features that we can point out in another video, but that's called a histogram. And it's often used when you have certain scores that happen a certain number of times. It compares uh, the scores and the frequency of those scores. So it's a histogram. And we have a uh, what's called a stem and leaf plot here. Now this first one is called an unordered stem and leaf plot because um, you've got these out of order. The five doesn't become before the nine and they're all jumbled up really. So in the stem and leaf plot, this section here is actually the number 53 and this bit here is the number 68 and 69 etc and the number 79. So it's almost like that's the tens column in this stem and leaf plot and these are the units column. So that's an unordered one. We often start with an unordered stem and leaf plot and then we put them all in order. You can see that as we go across say the 70s here, 79, 72, 70 and 72, we've placed that in order from going from left to right, smallest being on the left and the largest being on the right in each of the, in each of the rows really. So that's uh, handy there and we'd call that an ordered stem and leaf plot. And uh, that helps us for various uh, various um, statistical data ideas and uh, for a quick look at the shape of uh, data, etc. And there's your line graph that you've seen a million of uh, for things like the stock market and that sort of thing. You see a lot of line graphs or temperature graphs. There's a radar graph here. This one's a good one for temperature because uh, this one might be about um, months of the year. Um, it's got 12 items there and uh, it's a bit hard to spot but um, you've got a grid here that tells you what the value of each of the um, sections of the spider web it looks a bit like a spider web but it's called a radar graph um, and that's another way of presenting data so we've just had a look at the types of data in this video and the different ways we can present data and there we have it so uh, peterblakemaths.com I hope that helps to introduce the idea of collecting and presenting data Thanks for listening.